I want to thank uh, Gordon Food Services for their sponsorship of our learning series for our MYP. Uh, we are doing our MYP and BH today combined because uh, it's an important topic that Carrie Ann will be talking about and uh, we wanted everyone to definitely re benefit from it. So I'm going to pass you over to Danny, a representative from GFS, to introduce our speaker today. Danny, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Sam. And You're welcome. This is one of the larger events I've been to since starting with GFS, especially outside of the organization. I've been with the company for about one year now. I'm a member of the HR team based out of Milton. So GFS, we're celebrating our 125 years of business in 2022. So that's a big milestone for the company. Um, lots of good stuff going on. I'm not sure if most of you are local to Milton, but over the um, fall, we had a couple of times where the Vax Bus was on site. We're currently hosting an on-site clinic for our employees to get boosters. So although COVID has been a uh, detriment to most businesses, we found a way to, to per persevere our way through. And I have the pleasure of introducing our speaker today. So um, the reality of today's business world is that more and faster results are expected from workplaces wishing to remain competitive. Leaders need to be able to manage their own expect experiences or of working, working under stress while at the same time creating a work environment that facilitates creativity, team building, and op optimal productivity. Managers who employ mindfulness practices are better able to manage stress, are more conscious of their communications and able to respond to crisis with increased awareness and reduced reactivity. After experiencing a brain injury in 2012, Carrie Ann's world felt like it was tumbling all around her. She has prided herself in the ability to do, to be a successful career woman as the owner of a potential unlimited and a busy mom. By participating in brain rehabilitation programs, she has learned some life-changing tools around how to rewire her brain with mindfulness-based stress reduction to gain greater focus, clarity, and peace of mind. Mindfulness has been a game changer for Carrie Ann. Ostriker began to share her these tools with her clients and they were too able to, uh, were experiencing major shifts in the way that they began to live and lead. This, uh, this led Carrie Ann to develop her own mindfulness-based program for leaders that addresses the health and wellness issues, but also looks at leading mindfully for success. Carrie Ann's story was, was featured in the business section of the Globe and Mail and in Forbes. So with that being said, everyone, I wanna give you a warm welcome to Carrie Ann Ostriker um, and I'll pass it over to you. Thank you, Danny. Appreciate that uh, warm welcome. And first of all, I want to say that it is wonderful to be with you uh, virtually, you folks in, in Milton. I'm actually sitting in Huntsville right now. So uh, this is the beauty of the virtual world is you can kind of be anywhere and still you're connected to uh, people close to home, which is nice. And it's great to see some familiar faces as well as uh, some new folks uh, getting a chance to meet, which is great. I'd like to thank the Milton Chamber of Commerce, uh, as well as Gordon Food Service for having me here today. It's wonderful to have the young professionals as well as the after hours group, because that's gonna be so great for um, diversity of questions and really um, just some good discussion during the Q&A at the end. So glad everybody is here. You know, Sam, you asked a question, a really simple question, which, you know, was how are you? Um, before COVID, I think a lot of us would have said, oh, good, or okay. Um, now, nobody's sure what to answer. <laughs> and I think the silence really did uh, accentuate that because, you know, we're just doing the best we can. I think that's fair to say for everybody. Um, so, you know, when you think about how much has changed to, from two years, right? Like two years ago now, we were still going into grocery stores and banks without masks we were able to do whatever we wanted pretty much um and then in march 2020 that changed and it changed quick we had to pivot we had to you know pivot back and it's hard to know what the next week let alone the next you know year is going to bring so um i i just want to normalize that if you're feeling very uh uncertain right now and just not high in energy um you're surrounded in good company because I think so many people are, are there and that's okay. Um, for me, I have children at home. So I am no stranger now to homeschooling, to being the head chef, the custodian, the gym teacher. And of course I've got to do my work too, right? Um, 
And also my husband, Jeff, at 46 years of age, he passed away of an almost two year battle with esophageal cancer. Um, and that was just a few months before the COVID pandemic began. So I can tell you that there's been many days where playing all the roles that I've needed to play while being the sole parent on this earth, deep in my grief, as well as my, my kids feeling their grief and, and supporting them through that, it's felt really challenging. So um, I'm thankful that I have had the experience to learn a lot of the tools that I had in advance of that, one of them being mindfulness, because I swear it's kept me on the rails um, during some really tough and dark days. So, um, so it is a joy to be able to share that with, with you today. And I also know that there's people out there who have got grown children or they're single or they're by themselves and there's social isolation too with that. And, you know, that's a tough position to be into. So we've all got our own situations. Um, but I think it's fair to say that we probably are all continuing to go through something right now with this COVID uh, pandemic. So I'm here today to talk to you about mindfulness. And I wanna give you two things by the end of today. The first thing is I want each of you to experience a spa for the brain in our time together. Secondly, I wanna give you some tools that you can, if you choose, use them to navigate and help you in the days ahead. Um, and I'll talk about the benefits of mindfulness later on, but I wanna give you some takeaways, some practical uh, things that you can do right away off the get-go today. Okay, so let's get down to the business of mindfulness. I want you each to think about what drew you here today. So beyond just the obvious around, I saw the ad and thought I would apply, or maybe I know Carrie Ann and I wanna come out and, and see her talk, whatever it is, what is it that really interests you in mindfulness? Is it something that you maybe have heard about in the media or through a friend and you're curious to see if it might be for you? Perhaps you're looking for ways to be more grounded and not so reactive because when we're feeling stressed or pressured, which most of us are right now, we tend to be in reactive mode. And that usually is not our best way of being. Usually, you know, if we can get into that proactive grounded place, then we're gonna approach our work, our relationships, everything in a different way. Or maybe you're feeling like your mind is like that, that hamster in a wheel that's constantly churning, 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 and it's like, go, 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 go. And you're not really sure how to give yourself a break every now and then and pull off of that hamster wheel to really find that peace of mind. I think we all have our reasons for being here today. And I wanna share with you what led me to mindfulness. So about 15 years ago, I was working downtown Toronto as a vice president within the financial services industry. And I was pushing myself and I was pushing myself hard and I was climbing the ladder quickly. And then on top of that, my social life was equally as demanding. Then in the midst of all of that, I made the decision to leave my job that I liked, to follow my entrepreneurial spirit around uh, starting my executive coaching firm, Potential Unlimited. So my passion for this business, mixed with a desperation back in those early days to earn money like I had before as the breadwinner of our family, was driving me to push myself beyond the max. And I have now learned that when we do that, that eventually something's gonna give. We can only push in that, in that space for too long and then something's gonna go. For me, what that was, first thing was my sleep. So I expected that my brain was gonna go, 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 go all day long. And then as soon as I was ready to sleep, that I would just hit the lights, put my head on the pillow, and you know, I'd fall asleep pretty soon. Well, the reality was after a while that wasn't happening for me. I would lie down and I would toss and turn 
I would think about to do's. I would think about things bothering me. I would think about some creative ideas, but I just couldn't shut it off. And before I knew it, I was spending full nights awake. And then I had so much to do throughout the day that I was exhausted, not feeling good. And I, I just wanted to fix it. Like I wanted to slap a bandaid on this and just carry on. Uh, I wasn't really aware that maybe there was a deeper issue. I just wanted to fix. So um, I found meditation and meditation is a little different than mindfulness. And I'll explain the difference later on. But what I did is um, I went to a studio once a week and attended a class for an hour in meditation. So focusing on breathing and doing some exercises like that, just very quiet. It was great. I actually really enjoyed it. But what happened is that as soon as that hour was over and I left the studio and I'm walking out to my car with every step that I was taking to get to my car, I could feel the list in my mind starting to come up around my to do's and things I had to do when I was going to get home or, you know, I had to do the next day. And really, in essence, nothing changed until the day that everything changed. It was July 18th, 2012, when I walked into a medical clinic near my home for an x-ray of my back and neck. I had been experiencing aches and pains after giving birth to my daughters. At that point, my youngest was just a baby and my eldest had just turned three. So for you ladies out there and you know, kudos to Julie Cole and her six kids, because man, <laughs> <laughs> two was enough for me <laughs> but pushing babies out of our bodies and you know things don't always go back to the way that they were before right and that seemed to be the case for me with these aches and pains that something had shifted so i was hoping that getting this x-ray was going to lead me to really get the answers that i was looking for for this x-ray i was told to be in standing up position so i was in, in standing position and my head had to be looking up at the ceiling. The technician told me just to hold that position and that he was going to go to the next room to flip on the machine and that he would return shortly. Now, as soon as he left the room to turn on the machine, I have no idea what happened, but I do know what happened quick. The lights in my being went out and I fainted. I didn't even have time to grab anything on the way down. And I never had fainted before. My head went crashing off the concrete floor of this basement medical facility. It was lights out for me. When I came to, I could not see for three hours. I was vomiting continually and I could not move my arms or legs. I knew that nothing was broken because there was no pain in those extremities, but I just couldn't, I couldn't move them. I was taken by the ambulance to the, to the hospital um, from this medical facility, and I was later diagnosed with a severe traumatic brain injury. And as such, I was sentenced to go home and my husband, Jeff, picked me up and I couldn't even go, go in the wheelchair. My body had no ability to even sit in a wheelchair, so he essentially carried me out and lied me against the back of the car, uh, the back seat, and had to carry me upstairs into the bedroom. And as such, I was told no stimulation until at least some of the brain pain subsided. So I know that a lot of us are feeling isolated right now with all this COVID lockdown stuff, but what I'm talking about here is zero stimulation. So for me, that meant my kids were sent away to live at my parents a few hours from us, no lights, no computer, no TV, no podcast, no conversations, even with Jeff when he delivered meals to my bed three times a day. So it was me in pain, in darkness, and I stayed like that for weeks. When I started to finally emerge from the bedroom, I was able to come downstairs for 10 minutes and sit in the living room and it was very clear that my healing journey was far from over because that's all I could take. I started to get the room started spinning. My eyes, I was so light sensitive um, and I still am, but really light sensitive. 
bad headaches, uh, a, a sense of confusion, uh, dizzy, like just felt sick to my stomach, all kind, like I, I just felt awful. So would end up just having to go back upstairs into the dark and stay there. Um, so Jeff started to research what would be my options to continue my healing. And what he found is that there was hospital types of outpatient brain rehab programs within Ontario. Key is the really long waits to get into them for the most part. Um, this one here, Toronto, this was the quickest one to get into and that took me a year to get into that on a wait list. So I have now, since the time of my injury, been in five of these hospital types of brain rehab programs to the full length, full extent of their offerings. And I was in one seven week clinical trial in Montreal. My brain continues to heal year over year, but I still have a brain injury. Even though I look and I sound normal, I still definitely am on a healing journey. So I have found through my brain injury thus far and through my life's experience as part of this recovery that I have learned some invaluable experiences uh, that have completely changed my life and have allowed me to rewire myself to have a life and work with a deep level of fulfillment despite all of the chaos and uncertainty. And mindfulness has been one of those game changers for me. It was something that was, was offered at each of these rehab programs and the clinical trial that I was a part of, not as a nice to do, but as something that's so essential because there's so much research out there on what, um, on what mindfulness can do for an injured brain as well as for healthy brains. So let's talk a little bit more about what mindfulness means. Because as I talked about earlier, um, there's meditation, there's mindfulness, and I think that the two are used interchangeably, but they are a little bit different. So I just wanna clarify exactly what I'm talking about today uh, so we're all on the same page. Mindfulness, that is paying attention so to the here and now. So when we work, when we do things outside of work, it's trying to be in the present moment as much as possible. So let's play with this right now. So if you're going to be mindful in this very moment, you're going to be aware of the seat against your legs and the chair back supporting your back. You'll notice the feel of your breath going in and out. In some ways, you know, we, we totally don't pay attention to our breathing, but it's actually a miracle every breath that we get to take. Okay, let's continue on with our mindfulness. So you're also noticing your thoughts. Maybe you're feeling hopeful. Maybe you're feeling tired. Maybe your mind's thinking about what you're going to have for dinner tonight. Maybe you're thinking about other things you have to do, or maybe you're excited in this moment, you know, like everybody's got a realm of different emotions and thoughts, but the idea is not to grab onto it and start weaving this story. Um, Cause the reality is in another five minutes, you might have a completely different present moment experience. So just stay with what you're feeling and let it go. Stay, notice, let it go, notice, let it go. So that's the idea. And mindfulness um, is kind of that overarching way of living and working. So if you're having a meeting with somebody, whether it's virtual, in person, on the phone, you are parking your to-dos, parking everything else outside the door, and you are focused on that person and the conversation. So you can see how that would be actually really beneficial for relationship building and for communication, because chances are there's gonna be less miscommunication when you're really focused on what that person is saying. And when you're walking, maybe from uh, going for a walk or from building to building, noticing the feel of the ground under your feet. So the idea with mindfulness is trying to be as aware as possible with the present moment. It's impossible to do it all the time. I've been practicing this for years and you know it is a practice for that reason because the idea is uh, you're never gonna be doing it 24 seven. But let me tell you, that there is tremendous benefit to just practicing, even if you don't always get it right. 
So mindfulness, or sorry, so meditation is an exercise that can get you into a mindful state, often focusing on one's breathing for a set period of time, but it simply is an exercise. Mindfulness is that bigger way of living and working. Meditation is just an exercise or tool for a short period of time that can get you into a mindful state. So I hope that that clarifies the two for you. So let's talk about benefits. I wanna talk just for a brief period on the benefits uh, because I actually wanna spend more time with you going through and having an interactive session about mindfulness so you can try it on, you can see how it feels, you can ask me questions at the end when I'm here to, to help you through that. And I think we can all use that spa for the brain type of experience. But I also am aware that some of you have never practiced before. And if I'm asking you or, or saying, hey, why don't you try? You want to know, what am I going to get out of this? What, how is this going to help me? So let me build the case for you. Benefits of mindfulness. So it can reduce stress, improve your working memory and function, um, and that executive functioning. Better listening, as I talked about before, with the relationship building. And it can save money. It can reduce absenteeism, reduce poor performance, turnover, accidents, and stress-related comp claims. So how, you may be wondering, just focusing on the present moment and your breathing or your thoughts, how does that equate to all these benefits? Like, how is that possible? Okay, so stay with me here. I'm going to explain that to you. I want you to think about your brain and mindfulness like your bicep here. When you work your bicep out, for those who do, you're gonna grab a dumbbell. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna grab a dumbbell, showing off my bicep here. <laughs> and, and you're gonna do some bicep curls. Okay, my form is a little off, but hey. So what's gonna happen after you grab that dumbbell and, and do the exercises, rest, and then do them again, and then you practice that over the course of, you know, a few weeks or a month. Well two big things are going to happen to that bicep. First of all, it's going to grow. Your bicep muscle is going to get bigger. The second thing that happens is that it's going to actually have greater strength. The load that it can carry, its capabilities will increase. So that is the exact same principle that applies to your brain with mindfulness. When we practice mindfulness regularly, even over a few week period of time, our brains grow. The gray matter, particularly within that prefrontal cortex area, actually gets bigger. And this area of our brain in the front largely houses a lot of that executive functioning ability. So like your ability to plan and organize and you know all those leadership management types of things, that is here. So when our brains are growing, you probably guessed it, our capabilities increase too. So the flip side of things can also happen. Research shows that when we are faced with the stress of everyday life, and I am not talking about COVID stress, like I'm talking about before the COVID time, just that stress of the everyday life, that over time, our brains start to shrink. And guess what? Our capabilities start to shrink too. So a great way to counteract that through the aging process is to practice things like mindfulness. Now, that day back in July, 2012, when I fainted and my head went crashing off the floor, I lost neural connections and I had brain cells that died. They are never coming back again but I needed to find a way to rewire myself so that I could still continue to function in the world. And mindfulness has been an invaluable tool to help me to do that. So the question I'm sure you're all wondering is, how do you live and work more in the present moment? Well, as Danny said in the beginning with my intro, there's many ways around it. And I've created full programs on helping uh, people in business and, and leaders be more mindful. But all you really need to get started 
is to practice on a regular basis, even just one thing that I share with you today, and that is gonna help rewire your brain. So I am going to take you to where my mindfulness journey started, and that's where we're gonna go right now, because on day one of my first brain rehab program, my first meeting of the day, so I, I saw a, a slew of people. I saw a social worker, occupational therapy, physical therapist, and like the list went on. But my first meeting was with the social worker. And I was feeling kind of anxious going into this. I didn't feel very good physically. Um, but also, I never really thought that rehab was something that equated to something that I was, right? Um, but I have learned, right? Like you can never judge and you just don't know where the path is going to take you. And I, I am so thankful for the ability to be a part of rehab programs. But so the social worker, um, when I sat down, she handed me a piece of chocolate. This is where my mindfulness journey began. So I know that the chamber has sent a message um, to each of you asking you to bring with you a small food item to this session. Maybe it's a chocolate covered almond or a jujube -jub or a little baby carrot stick or a small cookie or cracker ah, or sushi. <laughs> you know, whatever does it for you, bring it out. So um, if you don't have anything, you can always, you know, like water, coffee, wine, like anything edible or drinkable will, Sam, boy, you're making us jealous. <laughs> anything is going to work for you. So when I say, what I want you to do is take out the food item and for the next minute to minute and a half, I'm gonna watch the time. I don't want you watching the time because you have one thing to do. I want you to eat the food or slowly sip the wine or the water. I want it to be for the duration of the time. Okay, so it's whatever you choose. Okay, is there any questions before we begin? You can shout it out, you can put it in the chat. I just wanna make sure that everybody is clear on what you're gonna be doing for the next minute and a half. And one of the reasons I want to be clear is because this is actually gonna teach you a little bit about how your specific brain is wired. So I want you to, to kind of play with this, okay? All right. So no questions. So I'm going to give you a minute, a minute and a half to now eat your food. Okay, time's up. So I saw in the chat, some people were sharing their fun food items, which is awesome. Sounds like some good stuff. I also invite you to use the chat to share. I'm gonna ask you, what was that like for you? And feel free and share that. And what did you notice? So, what I see when I do this uh, exercise with people is people have a wide variety of reactions to it. 
you've got a group of people who usually end up, they have one bite of food in their mouth and then they end up, you know, like getting, like eating more and more, or they end up finishing before the time, even though they knew the idea was to kind of draw it out for the full duration of the time. Maybe they were tempted to check their cell phone or thinking about, you know, what they're going to have for dinner tonight or, or to do's and stuff like that. Like, so for those people, that tells me that your brains are wired so tight and just go, 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 go. Because the reality is, even though you knew simple instructions just to eat for the duration of that time, it still felt like I can't, I can't even spare a second, right? Um, and I got to do more, I got to eat more, or I got to, you know, keep going, keep going. So for people that fall into that category, uh, mindfulness could be life changing for you, <laughs> my friends, because it really does help wire your brain. So you get to choose when you want to go, go, go. And then you want get to choose when you're more grounded and when you can have that peace, which is a lot of times where the great creativity and fun in life really happens. Actually, there's also another group of people who they find this pretty free to actually give themselves permission to say, hey, I am going to focus on doing just one thing for the next minute. And I am going to leave everything else outside this door because this is it. This is it. Nothing else. And for those people, I bet that they were able to notice different things about the experience of eating. That's something we actually do on autopilot for the most part, right? Unless you do practice mindfulness. So for those people, I bet they noticed texture in their mouth. I bet you they noticed different sensations, you know, so of the wine, maybe there was a sweet or a sour or a bitter or a cherry or whatever. It just felt like richer. And if you were able to get into that category and there's, there's no win or lose, there's no right or wrong. It's just what it is right in that moment. But if you were able to experience that, Think about how that richness for that one minute experience could translate into your work and life if you were able to practice that more in any of those areas or in your relationships, right? So it really does uh, show the power of, of mindfulness and can give you some indication as, as to how you are wired. And my, there we go. Okay. So I am sure, maybe we don't look like this guy, but I'm sure we have all had times where we're stressed and feel like we're gonna lose our minds. <laughs> I know I have. So what, <laughs> so this is not confession, but what this is, is I want you, I want everybody to clench your fists and clench your faces and tense up. And you're gonna hold this for a second while I talk. I want you to close your eyes and think about a bad day or you wake up late, you're feeling sick when you wake up, you think, oh God, do I have COVID? I don't have time to quarantine and I couldn't get onto technology. It was all sketchy for me to attend a meeting and I'm late and I've got so much stuff at home and I'm just feeling miserable and stressed and now I gotta deal with this COVID test and ah, I'm gonna lose my mind. Now I want you to take a deep breath and release. This is what it feels like to work and live from a mindful place, even in those moments when the pressure hits. <laughs> ah. <laughs> a few Mother's Days ago, before Jeff got cancer, the girls and, and Jeff gave me a lounge chair for Mother's Day. It's out on my deck and I love this lounge chair. There is something so nice for me to go and sit out outside in our yard, put my feet up and just, you know, relax. I bring a book, magazine, kind of in my zone. But I started to realize that when I brought a book or magazine out with me, that I kind of was oblivious to what was going on around me. I would get so into the book that I wouldn't notice my surroundings. I wouldn't notice how I was feeling inside. Like I was completely disconnected from myself. 
So being a proponent of mindfulness, I thought I'm going to just leave the book. That's my crutch a little bit. And, and I can read it some other time. I still enjoy reading, but I'm going to come out and just sit in this chair and look up at the sky. Notice the breeze against my skin and the, and the sunshine. Be aware of the sound of the birds and children laughing in a backyard nearby. And also be aware of my own experience in that moment. And I can't tell you the last time that I did things like regularly look up at a sky or notice how beautiful the world is until I started going out to this lounge chair. And when I came back inside, even after 10 minutes away in my happy place, I felt more refueled. So I want you to think about where is your happy place? Now, with COVID-19 restrictions and fears and all kinds of things, maybe you are not able to get there in this moment or in the near future to your happy place. But I'm gonna challenge you. You can go there in your brain and get the same benefits. So follow me on this. There was a fascinating study that came out of Harvard University by Dr. David Hamilton. And what his study was about is how our um, thoughts impact the structure of our brains and our well being. So, for this study, he recruited a large group of people with the same IQ, and nobody within the group had ever played the piano before. He randomly divided the groups into two, they were split into two Group A. They had the assignment of playing a set piano scale for a certain duration of time each day. Group B was to think about playing that same piano scale in their minds for that same duration each day, but they were not even in the room with the piano. All participants' brains were scanned both before and after the study. The results were astounding. What they found is it didn't matter if an individual actually physically sat down and experienced and played the piano. They were getting the same growth of development of learning the skill in their brains and they were also getting the same feel-good types of chemicals of learning and experience like playing the piano. So everybody, regardless of what group they were in, benefited from just thinking about an experience and equally benefited. So how do we tonight take that research and apply it to our own lives? So we're gonna go back to this happy place. I want you to think, where is your happy place? If you're trying to decide between a couple different places, Pick the one that just feels the strongest for you in this moment. You're not stuck to it for another night if you choose to do this. And if you don't have a happy place, then you can just focus on this very moment, okay? So again, you're gonna close your eyes and everybody's closing. And I want you to see in your mind, the best you can, your happy place. Notice, are you indoors are you outdoors are you sitting in a car are you lying on a beach are you alone in that moment or are people with you do you hear noises are there any smells sensations is there a taste are you eating anything in this happy place or drinking something I want you to spend a moment, and I'm just gonna give you a, a few seconds in quiet, and I want you to try and just get into that place the best you can, your happy place.
Okay. And feel free to, to share on the chat where your happy places are. I think everybody would enjoy um, hearing some of the happy places. My happy place, uh, one of them is a place I've never been. It's Bora Bora. <laughs> Just because the pictures look so amazing of it. One day I will get there. Um, but it's nice to know where other people's ideas are because it may be something you might want to try out. So the idea is whether you can picture it well or not, um, that this is a tool you can use. So I encourage you, have a picture of this up on your screensaver in your computer or have it on your desk or out in your home and check in with it throughout the day. And even in those moments of stress and pressure, and in those bad, really tough days, if we're able to balance it out and still allow ourselves to kind of experience some of those feel good chemicals within our body, it's gonna lead again to that place of greater perspective and an overall sense of optimism and happiness um, in comparison to feel like you're going down the tubes, right? And again, using our brains to be able to help control our lives in a way we want. We can steer ourselves where we want to go. So I know in work that we do not get to choose every single task that we take on, but I bet there's a lot of things that you are doing that you're kind of just on autopilot because you're just so used to doing it that you just do it. And the reality is, that you might not need to do it. And the reality, and again, there's lots of reality here, but when one, when one door closes, another opens. So if you're able to um, free up some energy from things that maybe you don't need to do, then maybe you can focus on things that you really do wanna do. So whenever I get uh, some sort of work project or task that comes my way, I have learned that I've created this two question filter system for myself. And this really helps me just to kind of stop getting into that, uh, that autopilot mode of taking things on and to be able to make conscious choices about where I want to spend my time in my life. So something comes my way, I ask myself, do I need to be the one to do this? So maybe I do, maybe I want to do it and that's okay too. But Again, I'm gonna get you to push your back on yourself because chances are you're always gonna say, yeah, I need to be, I need to do it. Cause you know, John, he doesn't um, know how to do this. Sue, she's too busy. Or I don't know if I could trust that she's gonna get it done as well as I could do it. Now, I can just do this in 10 minutes. Like it's not a biggie. But when we get a lot of those things piling up, it does become a biggie actually. So you wanna consciously, you know, make a decision with everything. Do I need to do it? If you come to the conclusion that, yeah, I do need to do it, I want you to then ask yourself the second question. Do I really need to do this now? You know, I find we wire ourselves to jump, jump, jump so quickly in our lives that pretty soon every project feels like a house on fire. And the reality is that when we're allowing ourselves space to kind of back up, we realize that, you know, maybe we can drop a few balls. Maybe we can have some help, delegate it, not do it at all. And again, then that frees up energy when we're not doing everything. It frees up energy for things that are meaningful for you to do. So I invite you, if you want, take a picture or remember these questions. Um, and you know, because the reality is we get asked so much of our time and we really need to treat our time as one of our most valuable resources. And our brain, through asking these questions, you're rewiring yourself to consciously make the decision as to how you want to spend your time and not just take on everything. So next, we are going to head into a guided meditation. And guided meditations, as I mentioned earlier, are a great way to get into a mindful state. They're wonderful for beginners or for people who just wanna like, just focus on being mindful. Like they don't wanna have to think too hard. They wanna just have somebody else take them through it. Um, and there's lots of resources out there right now on that. There's apps that just calm, headspace, there's a website, uh, fragrantheart.com, that's great that I sometimes use. 
There's also YouTube, like, you know, you could look up guided meditation for anything, you know, for peace of mind, for uh, being an effective leader or manager or for relationships or, you know, anything under the sun. And you can get, uh, you can get some sort of a, a guided meditation on it. But today I'm going to lead you through that. And this is something that I do once a day. I find that I like to do it kind of in the midst of my morning, once I've kind of woken up and started to kind of do a few things for the day and my kids are kind of taking care of them where they need to go or doing what they need to do. And then I allow myself this time just to kind of check in and be grounded. You could do it lunchtime, you can do it evening, you can do it whenever you want to do it. Some of my clients will set their uh, phones or their watches on vibrate to remind them to do it each day. You can build it in as a calendar invite, however you want to remember to do it. But the idea is practice makes permanent and permanent in terms of rewiring. So I am going to invite you to turn off your cameras. This is your time. And I think this is the beauty of doing this virtually because your space is your space and your practice is your private time. Uh, you don't need to worry about anybody else looking at you or judging you or whatever, right? Um, you can do this lying flat on the floor. You can do it um, sitting in a chair. You could do a cross-legged on the floor, like whatever body position is comfortable for you. The idea is you just want to get into a place that feels good for you. Okay. So we're going to add a little bit of spa-like music to set the mood here for this. And if you do have shoes on, I invite you to kick them off and just have your feet, if you're sitting, have your feet flat on the floor to help you be more grounded. Eyes closed and your palms facing up. Kind of signifies when our palms are up, it's this feeling or this bodily position of relief, of kind of like handing over. Um, so there's something freeing about that too. I want you to take your, uh, take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your nose. A little secret on this breathing in through the nose and out through the nose is it's a bit of a hack for your brain in that even if you're feeling really stressed, when you breathe that way, it's almost like you hit a switch where you can move your body a little bit and tell it, tell your nervous system that you're, you're calm and you're okay, even if your thoughts are kind of raging. When you do that breathing in through the nose, out through the nose, sending the message that everything is okay. So I want you to continue to focus on your breathing There is so much fear and uncertainty in the world right now. People are scared of getting sick, of their businesses and livelihoods faltering, of the impact of this COVID-19 pandemic on people less fortunate than ourselves, and the mental anguish for many of us trying to play so many different roles at once while being isolated still from the rest of the world in many ways for an unknown period of time. Give yourself permission now to relax, to feel safe and allow your body and your mind to unwind, to feel a release from the moving and pushing that you may be doing in your life. This is your time to connect to you, the person inside of all of those roles and responsibilities. This is a moment for health and wellness, for you to refuel. 
Allow your shoulders to relax. And if you can, just listen to the sound of your breath as it goes in and out. I'm just going to give you a few moments to just in silence, just sit in this space. There's nothing you have to do. Nowhere you need to go, nothing you need to learn. Just be in silence. Whenever you're ready, slowly open your eyes, but I encourage you to keep your gaze down. There's no rush to, to open your eyes, to jump back into action. Just take your time. There's no rush to come back. Whenever you're ready, you can just slowly get back into position. Maybe you want to stretch your body, do some yawning, stretching, and just turn your cameras on whenever you're ready to continue. Okay, so now we've had a few moments there just to kind of relax a little bit, slowly coming back. I end each of my executive coaching sessions with a challenge for people. Um, I think our session time is every minute is so valuable, but I also think that the work that happens between the coaching sessions um, is where a lot of the magic happens too. So. I'm going to leave you just in that same way with a with a challenge, but you're going to you're going to do the challenge right now. Um, I want each of you to pick one thing from today that resonated with you, whether it was a reminder of something, something new that you haven't that you didn't know you're learning. But I want you if you've got a pen and paper close to you, I want you to write it down what you would like to commit to on a regular basis going forward. And the idea is if you have pen and paper, that's preferable or pencil and paper because our brains actually, when we set an intention through writing it with our hands, it actually solidifies that more in our brain than even through the keyboard. Something interesting I learned through my uh, amazing neurologist. So take a moment just to write down your, your intention, your action. Okay, and some of you may just be wrapping that up, but um, as I am aware of the time, I open the floor to questions. And also Scott and I, we were talking before and, you know, even the idea of like, you know, how are people coping and like, what help do you need? Like, again, I'm an executive coach. So a few questions on the presentation or if you're struggling in a certain area around this, uh, I am here to, to help you. Uh, in any way I can. And I've left my contact information. Uh, you can always feel free and email me if something pops into your mind and uh, you just want to ask a, a question or whatever. Um, you know, I believe in this practice and we'll do anything I can to kind of help, help you through that. So, uh, okay. Just to open up the floor to questions. Scott, do you want to kind of help navigate things? 
Sure. So I can see most people on the screen, but uh, but maybe you can do your uh, your Zoom hand or your real hand, and I can I can see anybody that has questions. I guess, uh, Carrie Ann, have you noticed uh, through the pandemic that people's uh, challenges, other than the obvious, you know, uh, pandemic-related challenges, have changed, like in terms of you know their their mindfulness or their needs? Yeah, you know, I I have worked uh, as an executive coach, and and I do life and career coaching too, and I've done this for over ten years. What I am seeing over the past two years. I've never seen before in terms of you know smart capable resourceful resilient people are struggling um it doesn't mean they're always in that place but they are struggling and uh a mental health is an issue and you know i know the tomorrow is the bell let's talk day and um but yeah like so some of the things that we normally would be talking about, maybe around strategy or you know leadership capabilities, like the the more traditional ones, are being replaced by things like mindfulness because people are are really seeking ways, new management and leadership capabilities, to help them and help their people and help customers too, like in any way that they can. So this is going to be a tough question, but you know, if the pandemic were to end tonight. You know, for most people, how long do you think it would take for them to get back into uh, a, a back to normal, really? <laughs> oh, that is a good question. You know, there's a part of me that thinks, you know, it wouldn't take as long as maybe one would think. You know, in some ways, I hope we've learned something through this pandemic and that, you know, about the importance of slowing down and you know having something stripped from us although you know obviously it's it's a tough time but there are some there are some gifts so i hope that people don't just start you know flying out and like go back to the old way of like go 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 and like you know fly you know, we gotta go to the here and there and here and there because the reality is um there is some benefits to really slowing it down but um you know, there's things about getting out and being social that are so valuable to people too. So, you know, I hope we can keep the good from what we've learned about COVID, but I hope that we can take it forward into a beautiful future with, you know, lots of, of social and visiting and business meetings and customers and all kinds of exciting things. Okay, I'm looking at people beyond Scott. <laughs> Just because I'm not in there in person doesn't mean I can't track you down. Have you got any questions or comments yeah, or see, anything? Hey, Teresa. Hi, how are you? That was a great session. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have a question. I have um, kids, as I'm sure many of us do here, and I'm interested. I'm not sure of the ages of, of your kids, but did they notice a difference in you and your parenting? prior to the mindfulness and then kind of like the new improved version of you and and how else did it make an impact in your life outside of you know work i'd like to hear that piece a little more yeah it was tough with my kids because they were so young um when i suffered the brain injury and i spent like years up in a dark room like there was years i was not coming down for family dinners i was eating by myself in my bed in the dark and stuff so um I don't think they, they remember me before being mindful, but I can tell you, um, and it's not always perfect. Like there's times where, you know, I can fly off the handle like the best of them, but I also now through this tool, like I'm able to be less reactive. So, you know, how our kids like to like get us going and, you know, I can find my calm space for the most part. And I can react from that versus an escalated place of like enough, like, you know, and start yelling at them and tuning in. Right. Um, so I find our relationship is probably better. I feel like I can role model the type of parent. I want to be a little bit better. Definitely not perfect. Definitely not perfect. Not but, of us more. Yeah. But better than when uh, before, um, because before I was operating, I remember being told through this brain rehab process that if you think of think of your life like a glass 
And every to-do in your life is a stone that's put into the glass, right? Eventually, you're gonna be right up to the top. And then when something extra is added, eventually you're gonna spill over. So the idea with mindfulness is it kind of helps bring you down a little bit. So you got a little extra capacity. So when the, pardon my French, but when the shit hits the fan, then you don't explode, right? You've got yeah. more room to just kind of like deal with it in a calm way. So I do find like relationships and I look at, when I look at my girls and, and people for the most part, like I'm looking at them right in the eyes and I can see beyond, it might sound kind of like out there, but I can see beyond the words. Like I really feel like we're holding this space and I, I understand them in a different way. That's great. That's something I think I need to strive more yeah. capacity to deal with the, the fan in scenarios. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and the thing is like, if I hadn't had the brain injury, I don't know if I would have been introduced to this. So the good news is you guys don't need to experience a brain injury and spend years in brain rehab. You've got some tools to try right now to start, you know, even if it's just one thing, practicing it as much as you can is helping to rewire your brain. And again, you know, you can always shoot me an email if you have a quick question or whatever, and, and I'm happy to answer that. I'll put that up after, um, you know, too, just to kind of be there as a support for, and I offer that to anybody that I speak to. Super, thank you. Thank you. Anybody I think else? The challenge, I think the challenge too is that a lot of times uh, people just want to get a bigger glass to hold to yes. stone. <laughs> yes. You know, and this is the society that we live in, right? Like bigger is better. And like, I just want to, I should be able to do more. And, you know, and the reality is our glass is our glass. Like we're all human. And uh, I think the quicker we realize that, then the less we can start fighting against ourselves and maybe the rest of the world and just say, hey, this is what I can do. And I just want to be the best I can be in each moment. And I can't take on the world. So with a lot of the executives that you're coaching, do you get the sense that uh, that as they embrace mindfulness, that, uh, that they will be more reasonable in a way with their. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah, like, you know, I've had uh, I've had one uh, one of my clients said to me that it's like watching the grass grow the mindfulness that I've done with them as part of the overall sort of coaching, because you can't see it like you can't measure your brain. You can't scan and say, oh, yeah, I, I've got the benefit, you know. But everybody who has uh, tried it with me has said that their life and their work has shifted completely. So it's like, you know, something's happened. And yet me, like I, I can see there was a common denominator because like I'm seeing everybody I'm working with and I'm like, okay, wait a minute, they're all getting the same benefits. And then they start sharing those benefits to other people, which then, you know, leads to more people coming. But um, yeah, like it's, it, it's really life changing, but it's got to be uh, something that is practice. Like that's there is a discipline to it, right? Like it's a practice. I'm scanning for any other uh, hands raised or questions. <laughs> Let's see. So, Carrie Ann, you must look back at uh, where you worked in Toronto in your former hectic life and uh, just want to go into the towers when they're more full than they are now and, <laughs> and just and just shake and shake people and then and, and say you know you you need to change yeah well you know i like i was that super type a very strong extrovert uh executive right who was go 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 like i even think about the way i would walk from my office to another office. I was fast. I was like, you could hear that click and I sound probably like uh, the, the nightmare uh, female executive in those uh, Devil Wears Prada movies. <laughs> but, but you know, the reality is, is like now I've learned to tread softly, to be, uh, cut myself some slack, to be gentle with myself and to offer that to the world. And when you offer yourself to the world in a place of like that open heart, um, it makes, it makes all the difference. So you're completely right, Scott. I think that so many people could benefit from this and hopefully by me sharing my story that other people will seek this path too, because it is a lot better than the other path I was on, despite the fact I miss my husband every single day, but it's, it's, it is a better path. So they need to have your uh, meditation music on the uh, go trains. <laughs> well, I'm writing a book. I, I, 
Pete knows that and, and I think Julie does too, but I, you know, it's, it's a long process. So maybe someday there'll be my music and my book and people can read about the, the full story. But uh, anyway, um, there's lots of great resources out there now too. So I don't see any other questions. So Sam, I'll turn it back to you to, uh, to close. Sam, you're not, on, you're on mute, I think. So while we're waiting for Sam Carrie, Ann, I'll just say thank you on behalf of everyone. Oh, <laughs> um, you know, Carrie Ann and I met uh, via LinkedIn a couple of years ago and I've been uh, um, getting her, her newsletter consistently and uh, and I thought all the messages that were contained within that would be uh, very important for the uh, the Milton uh, crowd to uh, to uh, to listen to and and participate in. So I appreciate everything you've done today. Thank you, and thanks, Scott, and to Gordon Food Services. It's an absolute pleasure to be with you all um, tonight. So thank you for having me, and uh, enjoy the rest of your your evening. And Sam, I don't know if you can hear us now, or I can hear you. I just. Okay. Great. Yeah, we can hear you now too. Oh, can you hear me now? Okay, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carrie Ann. It was very enlightening. The meditation hit home with me. It's been a very long time since I've taken that time for myself. And I guess the last parting words is um, if someone has, uh, you know, in this go, go, go society, as you said, and being an exec or being an entrepreneur and constantly multitasking, and, you know, you've set that expectation to your clients or whatnot. How do you gently pull back to be able to get your life back and, you know, be able to be in the moment rather than constantly, you know, thinking ahead and worrying about things? Do you have any tips or anything like that you can share? Yeah. So if, if you've been like that for a while, you've, you've wired your brain to be like that. And like you're saying, you set the expectation maybe to your customers that you're a certain way. Yeah. But I think the shift needs to happen from within. Um, you need to make some decisions on how you want to be in your life. And the reality is I actually find that when I was able to slow down and maybe in some ways do less, I actually became more successful because I was focused more on what I was doing. I was doing a better job. I was in this place where I just felt like I was flowing better. The, the, I don't know if you believe in vibrations or not, but kind of like those vibrations were, were sent out at a higher frequency, something different. And, it just felt like, you know, I had to make decisions for my own life. And at the end of the day, you know, you're not going to be able to please everybody. So if somebody is not happy with the new you, um, then, you know, where one door closes again, one door opens. And that probably is more true for you. Um, so I would say always be true to yourself. Respect yourself. Practice mindfulness if it feels right for you. And then bring that element of yourself into the real world. And, you know, I think the success that can come from that is, you know, out of this world compared to that sort of drive hard, drive hard, you know, head down, not seeing all the opportunities because you're so in the weeds, right? Like you can open it up. It changes everything. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Carrie Ann. I really appreciate it. I'm sure everyone in attendance today got something out of it and can take something home. Thank you for the information, guys. Feel free to reach out to Carrie Ann uh, if you do have any personal questions or whatnot. And I want to thank Gordon Food Service again for their uh, sponsorship for today's learning system uh, series with our MYP. Thank you, everyone, for attending and have a great night. Go and relax. Do something for yourself <laughs> tonight and feel good about it for sure. <laughs>